Coming up next we have the third and final part of my Tamiya 1-350 scale HMS Prince of Wales. Before we crack on with the video though, I just wanted to give a special thank you to all of my new subscribers. Somehow over the past month, since the 1st of January this year, I've managed to uh, convince another 1,000 people to subscribe to my little model, model making channel, which is absolutely breathtaking. So thank you ever so much everyone who's decided to support me in um, returning your valuable time by watching my videos of these crazy models. And it's really, really very kind of you. So thank you very much. Here's to a successful 2019. Right, so let's get on with the video. So when we last left, the main hull of the Prince of Wales has all been painted and varnished and have proceeded to use um, some of the MIG products to carry on and weather the, the chipped hull. I've put some oil stainings on the deck here, as you can see, which is really quite nice once you use a bit of oil. Um, and then I watched a few videos and got inspired and put some little scuff marks on the, the ship. Um, the Prince of Wales only was in service for less than a year, so it's not gonna get too dirty thrashing around the North Atlantic. Um, so I just added a little bit of here, I had a couple of very kind comments over on the Facebook page about being just the perfect right amount of weathering, which is fantastic, so I really wanted to try and work on that for this build. Um, a few of the kits I've built in the past, I've been saying it's not that rusty, so I tried to sort of restrain myself and tone it down, which is good. Um, added a little bit more detail on the hull, just gave it a little bit of touch up here and there, and then highlighted some of the grey pieces, you can see the little flecks of light grey paint. Um, so that was good to give it a bit of weathering effect. So with the hull all varnished I decided to move on to finish the actual uh, superstructure and sub-assembly starting with the main guns and main battle bridge sections. Um, so they each got another little coat of varnish, a few little touch of paint put in there and a bit of highlighting before going to use raw umber and some oil paint thinner technique and then proceeded to sort of age the ship a little bit. You can see some drying on the hull there and then added some little lines on all the rivet marks, dry brush the ends of the bows and so show some wear and tear and get everything stuck down really. So it came along really well and um, I'm really pleased with the way it all came out. Overall it's a really impressive looking ship. Um, it certainly looks like a proper battleship as far as I can, can tell um, and I'm really really pleased with it. So I'll stop talking for a few minutes and just let you watch and have a look at some of the content here so you can see the detailing, the weathering coming along and then some of the assemblies in a bit more detail. The superstructure and the secondary guns in place decided to move on to some of the small detail pieces, this being the small lifeboat. So being the Eddard set, this is the photo etched bits in white, which you can see, and um, really, really small and pernickety and makes you wonder why you bother doing it. But it has got tiny little photo etched oars, which is nice. The two funnels uh, were stripped back and removed the horrible plastic venting, replaced by photo etch, as you can see here, and overall adds a really, really nice bit of detail to the work. With the lifeboats in place, proceeded onto small life rafts and some of the very small bits and detail pieces, and a few little touch ups on the bits of photo etch which I missed while spraying. Let's get on and crack on with spraying the funnels in place and the 
eight pom-pom guns, which are a combination of styrene and photo etched parts, some of which were hopelessly lost to the carpet monster, so I decided to replicate my own using the white styrene you can see, as well as the masts. And this rectangular piece here I wasn't going to use, but I changed my mind at the last moment, and that goes onto the stern of the vessel. So you can see a bit more of the weathering in detail. And then I proceeded to crack on and put some uh, rigging on. I hate putting the rigging together, but I thought I'd give it a good go. And then after a good couple of hours session, had the main side railing in place, which was really pernickety. And... But I did follow the technique I demonstrated to you guys in a previous video using the wax paper and tweezers. And um, yeah, just put on an audiobook. I'm currently listening to Ready Player One on Audible. If you ever listened to that before, let me know. Um, and then yeah, just sort of just got on with it really. So once it all dried, left it to dry for a couple of days, just make sure I didn't snap anything, and then proceeded to put the detail painting on the rigging, adding a few decals here and there onto the little boats and planes, and just make sure I didn't miss anything before putting on the final flags as you can see here. The Eddard set does come with about 250 tiny little sailors. I put three on just to have a little bit of a practice. One for me, one for my wife, one for my daughter, so you can have a look at those for scale. But yes, overall it's an absolutely fantastic kit. I can't believe it's coming up to a year when I bought the kit at the Milton Keynes Model Craft back in April last year. Um, so looking forward to going again to that. Um, but this is going to be a fantastic addition to the fleet. I think I'll have to do a video of the Prince of Wales up next to the Bismarck so you can see the two side by side. But thank you very much for watching and again everyone who subscribed especially the last couple of weeks is absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much for all of your kind comments as well and especially thank you to my two patrons Charles and David. Your support means a great deal. Until next time, thanks guys. Bye bye.